we're going to talk about the nerves of the upper extremities. This is such an important topic. The nerves we're going to cover are the median nerve, the ulnar nerve, and the radial nerve. We're going to discuss the sensory pathways, which will give you an understanding of the signs and symptoms of a nerve injury. Now, the obvious bite of a needle in direct contact with the nerve, well, that doesn't need a whole lot of explanation, but we're going to get into some of the subtle differences between having an arm extended outward and the circulation is slowed for a little bit so the arm goes numb versus a digit being numb. One of the many reasons that Ava does promote no blind sticks is the ability to visualize nerves prior to putting a needle near it. Anytime you're placing a device in the upper extremity above the AC, ultrasound is mandatory, and the nerves that you need to identify prior to puncturing are the median nerve and the ulnar nerve. The median nerve runs directly with the brachial artery and veins. The ulnar nerve in the upper arm runs deep to the basilic vein. As the median nerve comes down, it'll come down the radial side, which will innervate the radial nerve. Remember we said that the ulnar nerve lies deep to the basilic vein. It also travels down distally to the digits. Remains with the same name, ulnar nerve. And you guessed it, it's on the pinky side along with the, the ulna bone. Nerve injuries can become evident during the insertion process of placing a needle and or a sheath dilator into the tissue. And they can also show up post-insertion if a patient complains of numbness or tingling and didn't have that, that identifiable jolt or electric shock feeling in their hand during the insertion of a device or just the placement of a needle. Those are the ones we have to be particularly vigilant with and pay close attention. These conditions can be devastating and become chronic conditions the patient suffers, the clinician suffers, and the hospital can suffer as these complications are largely preventable and often end up in a court of law. Let's get into some of those specifics on how to identify the difference between an arm that has been out for a period of time with a tourniquet on it and the circulation is slowed and they feel numb versus the nerve has been impinged or damaged and they're losing sensation. The patient may complain of numbness or tingling. If you've been in your procedure for a bit of time and the arm and hand have been at or below the level of the heart, it may be just that the circulation was slowed and a couple of fist pumps and movement, the hand should come right back to normal. That's a watch and see. That's something that you wanna look at, check back in five, 10 minutes, see if the, if the numbness has completely resolved and then you can pretty much chalk that up to procedural just numbness. When a patient complains of numbness and or tingling, that is a situation that you never want to ignore. And you need to document that. Document what those signs and symptoms were, the actions you have taken, who you discussed the problem with, and what your follow-up plan is. Check back frequently until that is resolved or you have taken action. Having a patient complain of their entire hand being numb, my first thought would be a wait and see. Follow that for 10 to 30 minutes. And if you find complete resolution of the symptoms, it's likely that it was procedural. However, if they complain of numbness in digits, in either their pinky ring or their thumb, their index, or their middle finger, or any combination of that, then you need to think specifically about a nerve impingement, a nerve irritation, something with the nerve is going on. That can never be ignored, it must be addressed, and the line has to come out. If you leave a line in and a patient is complaining of numbness, tingling, electrical, any of the above, the liability is on you. 
So be mindful of that. Be vigilant with it. This causes devastating outcomes if it's ignored. This image has been up for a little bit. We're going to get into the specifics of nerve and sensation. Let's start with the median nerve, the palmar aspect of the hand and the inner aspect of the thumb, as well as the index and middle finger upper digits are innervated by the median nerve. So let's put this into a practical situation. You are putting a pick in to the brachial vein and post procedure, your patient complains of numbness in her index and middle finger. That would be a real big red flag for you to say, my patient's hand is not numb through and through. I have digit numbness or digit that I'm tingling. Pull the line. Catheter is likely laying near or on a offshoot of that nerve. Those symptoms can wax and wane as they move their arm position, their hand position. It could change and all of a sudden the numbness goes away, then it comes back, goes away, comes back. What we don't want to do is create permanent nerve damage for that patient. Moving on to the radial nerve. The radial nerve is depicted in blue. So it has the dorsum of the thumb, the index finger, and half of the middle finger up to the distal, most distal joint, the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve has responsibility for the medial aspect of the hand. Again, we're talking in the anatomical position, the medial aspect, and that's shown in orange. I think it's orange. But also I want you to take a peek really close. If you look at just the underside of the thumb, it also innervates that section right there. So. Pay close attention if your patients are talking about numbness, tingling in certain parts of their hand, you need to be highly suspicious of that catheter bothering a nerve and take action, swift, decisive. I hope this has been helpful. I appreciate any comments you might have on this. Look forward to our next video on anatomy and physiology and other procedures with vascular access. Thanks for tuning in and come back often to the AVA Academy.